We're back at 813. You might think you've seen everything there is to see of Marilyn Monroe, but thanks to a love-struck teenager who spent an afternoon, actually a lot of time with her a half century ago, just a couple of blocks away, we've got some new footage never seen in this country until now. I want to be loved by you. Marilyn wanted to be loved, and loved she was. An American icon even now. Isn't it delicious? The year was 1955. Marilyn came to New York and studied at the famed actor's studio. A 14-year-old boy from the Bronx named Peter Mangone donned a suit and tie and skipped school to catch a glance of the star outside her hotel. First came autographs and snapshots. And then, magic. Heaven. I'm in heaven. Marilyn invited Peter along as she walked down Fifth Avenue playing to his amateur camera. Long after their afternoon date, Peter went on to become a roller derby star and hairdresser to the stars. He thought the film had been lost forever until his brother found an old collection of movies in their father's home. Among them, this gem, Marilyn on the streets of New York. Isn't it just as Peter remembered her. Peter Mangone, good morning. So nice good to have morning. you here. Thank you for having me. So you were obsessed with Marilyn Monroe pretty much when Beyond you were 14 belief. years old. Beyond belief. And you used to dress up in a suit or a coat and tie and hope to catch a glimpse <coughs> of her when, when she was in New York well, City, right? now that I'm older, I can tell the story. I used to really cut school. I used to get up every day and put on a shirt and tie because I read she was coming to New York to go to the actor's studio and she was going to be at the Gladstone Hotel. And that was like to me, I think it was either Sidney Skolsky or Earl Wilson had mentioned it. And I used to get up every morning, dress up, go on the train, cut school and wait for hours. Some days I'd never see her. Some days I'd get a glimpse of her. Then I finally stood across from the hotel one day and I saw her. The next day I went in front of the hotel with a piece of paper and she signed it. And she said, you were here yesterday. She said, you had a red tie on. She says, weren't you cold? Because it was freezing. Aww. She noticed. She cared. You know, she she befriend, befriended me over the the months and, and weeks that I've seen her. I mean, she's absolutely magical, magical. I know that sometimes you would take still pictures of her, right? That's how I first did it. I, and, I would get an autograph, right? And then the next, I have a reason to go back. Then I'd go back with a little brownie camera, take the picture. And then those days, you had to send it out and get it back. And then I'd bring it back and she'd sign it. It's on one of the pictures. And that was another time I saw her. Then I'd see her with Joe DiMaggio who used to come by all the time. And she was great. She used to tell me, she used to give me rides to the subway if it was raining. She would give me, a, a, one day she gave me candies to take home and I ate most of them on the subway. On the subway home, I used to like pretend I was coming from a date. And with I would, Marilyn Monroe? With Marilyn, of course. <laughs> And I would rem I'd embellish, well, you know, this, and I have her over my house. My mother, Ida, was a cook, and she knew that. By the way, she knew my mother was a chef, and she said, one day she said, Peter, how's Ida's meatball? Pete, she called it. Pete, how's Ida's meatballs? I said, the best. Why? She says, what's with you and Italians and their meatballs? <laughs> Every time I'm out with Joe, they talk more about meatballs than, than baseballs. It is so cute that she really, you guys really became friends. And one day you had an 8 millimeter camera with you. I snuck my brother's graduation gift out of the house and I took it downtown. It was 1951. It was a wind up Revere and I'm walking backwards. Let's look at this tape as you're telling. Go ahead and you okay. keep talking. Yeah, she comes out of the hotel and you'll see she comes over to me and tells me she's going to go shopping and to come. And she. And if you see the footage from the beginning, and that's it. And I spend the whole day. And the whole day she played with me like she that. She obviously was that. working the camera in a serious way. They say people that have filmed her, which I don't know, said no one captured her like the 14-year-old kid because she wasn't threatened. She wasn't afraid. It wasn't going to be in the paper. So I got the real girl. She looks so carefree. Who are all those people around no, her? The, Giorgio is the gentleman that made the dress she's wearing. And on the other side is Milton Green, who had all of the, he was a partner in Marilyn Monroe Productions and has all of the fabulous film of Milton. What goes through your mind when you see that old film? First, when I, when I thought I threw it out for 50 years, right, I walked out of New York it. City. No, it was gone. To me, it was gone, burnt in the incinerator. And I said, how could I do that? And every place I went in the world, you see Marilyn here, you see Marilyn there, you can't get away from her. My brother called me one night, my brother Lewis. 
And he, in fact, he worked here in the mailroom when, when this was taken. <laughs> yeah. So he says to me, Peter, guess what I found in Dad's house? What did you find, little watch? He says, no, I found Marilyn, and she never looked more beautiful. I said, what? I'm sleeping. I hung up. He called me back. I thought it was a dream, because in my mind, never to be seen again. So this is like, wow. What a treat. What a treat. It, it, uh, uh, oh, yeah. I want to give you something. Really? Yes. This is the first print taken from the negative, and it was taken and done by Josh Green, who was Milton Green's son, who was in the movie. Right. And this is the first image taken, and this is for Katie. Oh, thank you so much, Peter. This is to Katie. One legend deserves another. Ah, uh, you're sweet. Thank That's you so you much for that. I, I know you're big My da daughter Carrie is an obsessed with Marilyn Monroe as well. <laughs> and she has pictures of her all over her room. So we'll See, add then I'm not the only this one. This will be the centerpiece of the collection. <laughs> Peter Mango, thank you so much. Goes, thank you so much for and, having and me. And good luck and, with, with the film. And good luck to you. Thank you. And we'll be back with much more today right after this. Come back here, Peter.